Welcome to the R video tutorial on MANOVA in R. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to do MANOVA or multivariate ANOVA in R. So the first thing I'm going to do is read in some data from the skull data set, which is a data set that's famous. It's about Egyptian skulls varying across different time periods in Egypt. I'm using the read.csv file, and I'm giving the direct path to my file. I'm not using the file.choose function, which I usually use, just so you can see how to use this direct path approach. So I'm going to read in the data set. As usual, when you read in the data set, nothing happens. So what we need to do is see whether the data read in, and I'm just going to use the names in the data set. Okay, so... Our data set has a column named MB, another column BH, BL, NH, and year. I'm not going to tell you what these mean because I can't pronounce them and I don't want to embarrass myself. But anyway, these are going to be the variables that are in our data set. So the next thing we can do is actually start doing a MANOVA. So I have a variable that I'm calling skull.manova1. And I'm putting the one on there because I'm going to have multiples of these and it's good to know which ones you're going to do. All right, the next statement is MANOVA, which is what we're trying to do. I'm using the C bind here because when you do MANOVA, you have multiple columns, which are your response, and you want to see whether these columns actually differ. Not the columns within it, but they differ across some other factor, and our factor will be year. So I'm using the C bind to tell it which columns form my response. So here, MB, BH, BL, and NH form my response. Then I have a tilde, and then I have here as factor year. Now year is a numeric variable, and I want it to treat it as if it's an actual factor or a character variable. So what I'm doing is I'm saying as factor year. That way, it knows to turn it into a character instead of using it as a number. And then on the next row, I have data equals data1, which is the data that I read in. And then I have summary skull.manova1, and it'll give me a quick summary. So we can see what this can do. All right, so we have some results to look at. Here, it looks like a normal ANOVA table, but when you start to look at it, you see it's a little different. We have degrees of freedom, but we don't have sums of squares. We have this poli, and that's basically the type of test we're doing. We have approximate F, numerator degrees of freedom, denominator degrees of freedom, and then a p-value. And this p-value would suggest that the skulls differ across these ages. Okay, so you may want to do a different type of test. Maybe you don't want to use Pillai. There are a variety of testers, Hotelling Lolly, Roy, Pillai, Wilkes, and you can specify in R which one you want to do, but you specify it in the summary statement. And below here I have examples of how you would set these up. I'm going to run them all at once, just so you know that they work. And Okay, so we can see that here are each of these different tests. And if you look at the p-values, they pretty much agree with each other. All of them would say that the skull shapes are differing across the time. Okay, another thing we might want to do is look to see which one of these dimensions that form our response would be different. And to do this, we can use the summary.aov function on skull MANOVA1. Okay. We have our output here. And if we look down through the p-values, these are done by each response vector or response variable in our response. Uh, looks like MB is significant. BH, marginally significant. BL would be highly significant. NH, not significant. All right, another thing we might want to do is some sort of pairwise comparisons or multiple comparisons. Here, to do pairwise comparisons, we can just do a separate MANOVA for each separate pairwise comparison that we want to do. And here I'm just giving you a simple example of how to do one. You can go back and change them as you need to. Just remember, if you're doing multiples of these, in order to control your type 1 error rate, you need to adjust your cutoff value associated with your p-value in order not to get into having problems with type 1 error rates. Okay, so here the statement is the same as before. Here I call it skull.manova2 as opposed to one, but I add another line here called subset. And here I'm saying as my year, which I have as factor, is in 4,000 and 
negative 200. So 4,000 BC, 200 BC. It's going to compare those two. And it's just going to run it on that subset of the data. And then I'm going to just run a summary on it and see what happens. Okay, so based on what we have from our subset here, we have our output, and we can look and see that our p-value associated with this comparison, this pairwise comparison, is highly significant. So we would say that the skull dimensions between negative or 4000 BC and 200 BC are significant. Hopefully this gets you started with MANOVA in R. If you have any other questions, please ask or watch the next video.